And so to the 70 mark and the big one. There are seven common targets uh, that we've set you for this. You may again have some specific targets on your paper, but you need to read your answer very carefully and see if any of the following apply to you. This one comes straight from OCR. The examiners love to see a plan. Not only that, they love to see that you've put sources in more than one grouping and that you have three groupings. Okay, you might not have thought of your third grouping yet. Maybe you think of it through the assessment. Um, but if you can, you can pop it there in your plan. You can see an example of part of a plan, though there's a, a third grouping missing. Um, and you can also see in, in the example that this person has got sources in more than one of the groups. In the next example, you can see a good way of how you could begin your paragraph on your third grouping. Target 2 is something we work great at during the mocks, it's doing introduction. What you've got to do is set out your sources in the different groups. Um, as you'll see from this example, this person says, here's my group, here's the sources, here's my other group, here's my sources, and in my third group, these are going to be my sources. The only thing that this person could do to make it even better, to make it perfect, would be to state in that last little bit of the introduction what their third grouping is going to be all about. There are still some people who are taking the sources one at a time and one of the main skills they're trying to assess is that you can see the bigger picture, that you can see all the sources together. Here is a brilliant example of some cross-referencing. You can see this corresponds, uh, you can see similarly, you can just see how this person has, has is seeing the bigger picture. So there must be a lot more cross-referencing in future answers uh, for some of you. One way of deciding if this is for you is if you look uh, for some of those comparing words that we talked about from the part A of this answer. Have you got them? If not, this could be a target for you. This is, sounds like a really weird one, but people just seem to plonk quotes in. And I'm, by that I mean there's no, and this is because this source says this, and then it's explained, it's just the start and the end of a sentence, just whapped in there, without putting it into any context. If you're going to use a quote, you need to use a quote. You need to say why you're using the quote and what the quote shows. Target 5 to use your own knowledge, but use it intelligently. Uh, for example, this, this is one you've seen before, but if you look down at the bottom, you can see this person's talked a lot about the sources, and then at the end it, it goes on to use a bit of their own knowledge to further the argument that they've got. But do bear in mind that knowledge should be just a bolt-on section of your essay. It should be used within your paragraphs about the sources. We're slowly but surely taking steps in the right direction with regards to provenance, but it's still not quite there. You've got to not take everything at face value. The examiner is looking to see that you've got a good idea of what sources are and how you can use them and which are more likely to be more valuable than others and we're still not quite there with that one. Here however is an example of somebody who have, has considered the weight of evidence. Quite clearly I can see that they've been using my videos to prepare for the mocks. Um, I've put down the bottom perhaps something the, the, a different way they should have worded this but the point is they've identified one reason why for the given inquiry this source is a weighty piece of evidence. Generally speaking, conclusions were a bit of a problem. Lots of you were writing, I think that the hypothesis and, and so on and so forth. What you needed to do was state what the sources show in reference to the hypothesis. And if you're going to be really clever and you want an A, you're going to consider the weight of evidence in this. Not the amount of sources that show, because what if all, like four out of the five sources show support, but they're all rubbish. Um, so you need to take into account how valuable those pieces of evidence are based on the provenance. Here's an example. It's not perfect, but you can see they've considered weight of evidence by referring to a bit of the provenance, and they're definitely saying what the sources show, not what they think about the hypothesis.